related rates, related rate problems. There are tons of problems there. I can show you many of them. But uh, I just chose several creative problems. Which one of them is a falling sand problem? Falling sand problem. So you have a bin and the sand is falling down and creates some kind of shape. You can guess what's the shape. It looks like a cone. Looks like a cone, so it's keep falling and accumulates like this. And it's a very realistic idea. Definitely, it looks like a very good shaped cone. And they call it a conical pile. Sand falls from the overhead bin and accumulates in the conical pile with the radius that is always two times its height. That's not always the case, but for this problem, they decided to assume that the radius always two times the height. So R and H. Suppose the height of the pile increases at the rate of two centimeters per second when the pile is 25 centimeters height. At what rate is the sand leaving <coughs> the bin as at that instant? This is a related, a related rates problem because we are given two rates and one is unknown. Two rates are mentioned, one is given, one is unknown. And they ask to find one if you know the other one. Kind of, I told you many examples. You have a speedometer, it records one rate. Now from that rate, you can find other rates. So your job is to learn how to read this fast. You sit on the exam, you freak out, where is the formula, where is the numbers? You need to read it fast to be uh, confident in this. This is how I read it. I read it like uh, blah, 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 conical pile. I made a picture of the conical pile. So you know, like, if, you, if it says a can, then uh, it should be cylinder. If it says spherical shape, then it should be sphere. So that's how fast you figure it out. Then it says radius is always two times its height. Okay, so I said, here's my radius over here, and the height is over there. And then I can say that it means radius is two times height. That's the information I keep collecting from the writing. Then I read, uh, something is increasing. This is what I see. So this slash over here triggers me. The slash, slash. And I, I'm like, okay, Julia told me before, slash is something about derivative. Slash is about rate. Slash is per, per, centimeters per second. It's like, how fast did you drive? Oh, my speed, uh, my average speed was 55 miles per hour. That's speed, that's velocity. That's a derivative of a distance, right? So this is how you know, if you see the slash per speed changing a rate, that means we're talking about derivative. Some kind of derivative is given. That's one of the rates. So my job now is to figure out what kind of derivative is given. Okay, increases at the rate. That's a keyword too. That means something is changing. Then I'm going back. I'm going back and I see height. The height is changing and they even say increasing, so it should be positive, at the rate of two centimeters per second. So that means derivative of the height with respect to time, because per second, per second, that's time, is two centimeters per second. And you can make a tiny note over here. This, no, this is dh with respect to dt why height is changing so it's not h equals 5 or uh, equals 2 it's dh equals 2 with respect to time because of this second here and slash then it says when the pile is 25 centimeters height you see there's no slash there's no pair there's no increasing changing so it's when pile is 25 centimeters high what is that what is that? Mm. Height. So this is my H. Not DH anymore, because it's not a rate. It's a moment in time. H is 25. So I'll put H is 25 centimeters. Almost everything is uh, given, but one thing is missing. And this is the last sentence with a question mark. Always there's a question mark at the end. At what rate is the sand leaving the bin at that instant? So keywords. I'm reading rate. Okay, so they give me one more rate right now. Rate of what? The sand is leaving the bin. So this is not very obvious. The sand is leaving the bin. And when it leaves the bin, it makes a pile. All this is talking about the volume of the total sand because it's like accumulation of the whole sand. 
That means we're talking here about the volume. If it's not obvious from this explanation, then go to the step one. We gave you step. Step one, read the problem, make a picture. Step two, create equation that connects variables. What kind of equation will connect R, H, and this picture? Equation of the volume of the cone. And the volume of the cone is one-third high r squared h that's the volume of the cone squared. volume of just a second the cone uh, squared mm -hmm. you will see cube later in a second and you'll see why there is a formula that includes radius and does not include radius so we honestly we like we supposed to know this especially if you're engineering major and physics major but uh, on a test we usually give you this but in, on, in the homework, I noticed, so usually we give you these formulas. But you can always check it out. You can always Google the formula. Then I see that two rates, there are three variables here, V, R, and H. Your job is to understand um, which one is extra. There might be three related rates, but in this problem, there are only two. If I take my R and plug it in as a 2H over here, R will disappear. Then V becomes one third pi two H squared times H, and now you will see it's going to be cubed. So it becomes two times two is four, so it's four thirds pi, and then H squared times H is H cubed. So this is my new formula for the V. That's my new V. I'll put it in the box. Now, when I'm going to differentiate this, there will be two rates will pop out. V, which is a volume changing with respect to time, will be dV over dt, and height changes with respect to time. So it will be dH over dt. One is given. I'm going up, and I see that the height is given. So the volume is the one they're asking about. That's what this question means. At what rate the sand is leaving a bin at the moment we told you when the height is 25. That means here they're asking for dv over dt. dv over dt, question mark. dh over dt is 2. dv over dt is unknown. We have, we're going to have two related rates. One is given, one is unknown. That's exactly the classical related rate problem. Now your job is to differentiate this. There's no product rule here, no quotient rule. When I want to differentiate dv with respect to t, I need to keep in mind what is a constant and what is a variable. 4 thirds is a constant. Pi is a constant. h is a variable with respect to t. It's going to be dh over dt. 4 thirds pi 3 goes down h squared is that's all the derivative of h should pop out every time you see dependent variable like i told you in implicit differentiation when you see why it should why prime should pop out why because it depends on the uh, independent variable x or in this case t h depends on t so dh over dt should pop out Based on the chain rule, you can put a note, so basically this is chain rule over here. Chain rule told you, I see h first as a cubic function, 3 goes down h squared, and then I look inside, and inside of h, inside of h, there's a t, and inside of v, there's a t. And that's why it should be times derivative of h with respect to t. Here are my two related rates dv over dt and dh over dt and now the last step like everything we gave you just don't mess up which one is given and which one should you should be plugging in dv over dt is unknown so i keep it on the left hand side dv over dt equals three and one third cancels out four pi h is given let's go up and see h is 25 so it's going to be 25 this is the only time i will show you all the units carefully because i don't like showing units centimeters comes here squared it will be interesting how at the end unit will make sense 
square times dh over the t is given as well. Let's go up and check. dh over the t is 2 centimeters per second. So it's going to be 2 centimeters per second. Make a fraction like this for the unit. Then the answer becomes... 4 times 25 squared is 5,000 pi. And now, interesting how units will make sense now. Centimeters squared times centimeters becomes centimeters cubed per second. And indeed, it makes sense. We're talking about change of volume. So the volume changes with respect to time with the given speed. What speed is that? The volume is, first of all, increasing, right? So V is increasing because derivative is positive always. 5,000 is a positive number. Pi is a positive number. So this is indication that the volume is increasing. That makes sense because we're accumulating this in. And how fast does it change? 5,000 of pi fast. Centimeters cubed because it's volume per time. And time is measured in second. So all these things here make sense. And as a scientist, you're supposed to check. It should make sense. If units do not match, uh, you made a mistake somewhere, maybe you lost chain rule and so on, and some unit did not pop out. That's how people catch mistakes. <coughs> Questions, what do you think? Usually you read the problem, see the shape we gave you. If it's a pool, maybe it has a shape of the cylinder and so on. Write down the formula for that. Maybe there's a triangle, do that. Second of all, do those notes like the way I do. I think it's the best way. Take a pencil and then write down. What is my 2? Two? 2 was a derivative. 25 was not a derivative. That was height. Then if one derivative is given, the other one will be unknown. Write down the formula. Plug in whatever you can. Uh, no, plug in the relationship first, but don't plug in numbers. If you plug in numbers too early, you will not get uh, the right answer. Because then you cannot differentiate the numbers. Numbers will give you zero. You should plug the moment into the derivative. So you first need to differentiate. I had V. I found dV. And then I plugged in after that. Not too bad. I only left you like 11 problems for this homework. So you just need to go home and do those 11 problems. Probably, maybe I'll do it due Wednesday. But maybe I'll keep it due Sunday. Not too bad, but it's a lot of reading. So be ready to read a lot. Pretty interesting, though. Many of those applications are pretty interesting. So before I move on, do you know that you might have more than one rate? So in this case, for example, three rates were given at the beginning. Do you see which rates? So I we worked with two rates. The height was changing and the volume was increasing, right? Height is increasing, volume is increasing. But do you see the third rate in front of you, which we kind of did not use? The radius was changing as well. Yes, exactly. This is the rate too. The radius is keep increasing. But since we had connection between radius and height, we could just ignore one, which means we decrease the dimension. There's a process called um, dimensionalization when you decrease the dimension. Originally we had three rates which are three dimensions. One was related to another one so we decreased. And then I wanted to point out if I saw the example of this problem with the honey. If you put a jar of honey and the honey is slowly going down and makes a pile then it actually makes a spiral like this. If you ever saw how honey accumulated, it accumulates as a spiral because it has viscosity. Viscosity levels makes the physics, physics problem even more complicated, and you have to take this into account. It's so viscons it has some kind of viscosity that it becomes wider, faster than taller, right? So uh, the consistency of the object you're working in is, is important. What is that? Sand, like little stones, or you know, viscosity of the honey, or if it's water, it's not accumulating at all. So that's important to think about. There can be more rates than just two. And this problem shows you, just in general, one more example, with more rates. Basically, they don't even explain what it is. They just say, you know what, we're going to give you z of t, which is connected to x of t and connected to y of t, y to the 6 of t. And those are three variables. All three variables are related to each other with respect to the fourth dimension, time. So x, y, and z 
X left and right, Y front and back, Z up and down. In calculus 3, we're going to show you all of this, how to draw a three-dimensional um, Cartesian system. And they all have relationship with respect to T, time. So it's four-dimensional problem here. And then they ask you, find, find, and now I can give you any. I have three rates. I can give you any to find with respect to others. And I will just say, find the x with respect to t if, and now I give you stuff. This is problem is easy because you don't have to read a lot. I just give you one rate is given dz over dt, 185 dy over dt is 1, y is 2. Interesting, at some point, at the first glance, it's not clear why we gave you rate, rate, and then y, and then you will see why, why, why is important. Step 1. If we told you those are all rates, and I ask you to differentiate with respect to t, then, since they all have t inside, this will be chain rule, then I need to differentiate everything, keeping in mind x, y, and z are all variables. So it will be dz over dt equals dx over dt plus. Chain rule starts. y to the 6. I cannot do dy over dt right now until I finish differentiation of the polynomial 6 power y to the 6, but I know how to differentiate something to the 6. 6 goes down, copy that something, raised to the decreased power, 5, right? Times, now chain rule says, now you can differentiate function inside, so it will be dy over dt. Now you have three related rates, do you see that? Three mm -hmm. related rates, and, and there can be more many rates. Of course, they can be many, so that's a good example to show you. And you should not freak out if you see more than two. And now the step is the simple one. If you don't have to read a lot, you just plug everything we gave you. So you see, that's why y equals 2 was given, because y actually popped out over here. y equals 2, plug it in. Then what else is given? All the rates should be given. dz over dt is 185. 185. dx over dt is not given. dx over dt is the one we need to find. So I keep it like this. dy over dt is 1. Next step, I'm plugging everything in and solving for whatever is unknown. 185 equals dx over dt, which is the only one not given. Oh y is 2. Then I will have 6, 2 to the 5 times 1. That's convenient. The dy over dt is 1. You see the only variable left? Solve for dx, for that, for that rate. dx over dt is unknown. Carefully solve for this. 185 minus 6 times 2 to the 5. And the answer is negative 7. Negative 7. What does it mean it is negative? If the derivative is negative, what can I say about x? x is decreasing. Right now, we don't really ask you those questions. I like to bring this up because literally in two weeks, we're going to start optimization problems when we're going to ask you to do find the maximum and minimum. This will be important. If the answer is negative, you know some process is decreasing. And that will be crucial, that something is, the profit of the business is decreasing. Or the speed of the rocket is decreasing. And you take this into account when you build more devices. So more than two related rates. That's, I think, a good example as well.